husband left his phone unlocked and I found this. Plus update. I'm pretty sure my husband is cheating on me. He won't admit to it but I don't think I'm imagining anything. He left his phone near me on the arm of the couch and I saw some messages pop up from a person with a woman's name, a woman I've never heard of, and the messages were not innocent whatsoever. He seemingly realized he had left the phone there and quickly came back from the other room and grabbed it. I was nursing our daughter and our other children were nearby. Inside I was exploding. All I could do was give him the dirtiest look and he was like what? I told him you know what, he said I was paranoid. So I stopped talking to him for the rest of the evening. Once the kids were in bed and we went into our bedroom and I closed the door and asked him what an F those messages were about. He said he didn't know what I was talking about. I told him not to treat me like an idiot, I saw messages from a woman who clearly was not me talking about his PP. That's the word she used. Why would any other woman be using that word innocently in a text message to my husband? I asked to see his phone. Normally I'm not like that, but I had to see the messages and whatever else he's hiding on his phone, pictures, videos. He refused to let me see his phone. I told him that tells me all I need to know then. He said no, he's just not going to play this game with me. I'm now sleeping in another room for the night. I'm deeply in love with him. He seemed to be deeply in love with me. I feel as giddy and as excited to be with him now as I did when we first met. I feel safe with him and this is the man I always dreamed of. Despite being together for 10 years, I can't keep my hands off of him and he is the same with me. I'm attracted to him in every way. He's a great dad, totally engaged and involved, loving, patient, protective, fun. He is into all of this masculine stuff but wow he's the best girl dad and is truly their hero in their eyes. He didn't know if he'd ever decided to pull the trigger on having a kid, but he says when he met me that changed and we decided to have one and see how it went. We enjoyed the experience so much we did it three more times. Despite saying we were done at four, we've been talking about maybe one more. He has a job he's very committed to. A very good job that supports our family. I had a full-time career as well but I became a son when our third baby was born. His job requires travel several times a year, sometimes for extended times. I've had a few friends ask if I ever worried about the time apart and what he was getting up to. I was never worried. He's in constant communication with me, calls home to speak to our kids every night, and nothing ever seemed odd. The one thing that I now feel was weird is that there'd be an unfamiliar smell in his suitcase sometimes, sort of perfumed. The only thing I can figure is that he's been cheating on me when he's out of town. I don't see when he'd be doing it at other times. I don't know what to do now. He's probably deleting everything that was on his phone now. I feel dizzy. I want to know every single detail about whatever it is he's been doing. I don't want to feel like an idiot that will just sit at home and remain the fool. This is my worst nightmare come true. What he did next made me kick him out. Update I saw actually explicit texts on my husband's phone and what he said next made me kick him out. Luckily I followed some advice and I logged into his forgotten iPad. He rarely ever uses it. I saw the text that I had seen flash on his screen and a lot more than just that. It seems like after she sent him a message about two months ago he told her to not contact him again. He could have blocked her if he was serious about it, right? Eventually he started talking to her and their conversations have been going on pretty regularly since then and they're almost entirely actually explicit conversations. Where on earth did this lady come from? I doubt she randomly texted my husband's number by chance. I confronted him with undeniable proof that I had seen messages and he eventually admitted it's a woman he met while on a business trip and that they were only together a few times but then she started texting him. He slipped and said normally, I don't give them my. Then he realized what he was saying. He admitted to me that normally he doesn't give random women he hooks up with his phone number. He didn't say the full thing but that's what he was about to say. He was flustered. He couldn't believe I was smart enough to look at the iPad and that he hadn't thought about that. He still won't admit that there's been anyone more than this one woman. He says he's not in love with her, there's no feelings, it's just been flirting and texting and he got carried away. I can't just pack my bags and leave. I have four little kids. So I told him to leave, at least for now. I'm disgusted. He begged to stay and to fix things but I refused to talk to him. He's staying at a hotel right now. I almost can't function. I want to smash all of his belongings. One second I'm enraged and the next I'm sad and blaming myself. I know this sounds pathetic, but I don't want to be a single mom of four kids under seven. I don't want to be married to him right now either. Mother-in-law abandons my child, shows up after 25 years and expects to be accepted as a grandmother. When my son was three days old, his mother decided she didn't want a child anymore so I've raised him as a single father since then. She claims she's not ready to have a child and refused to even feed him or hold him. I wanted to give her some time, I thought that maybe it's just postpartum depression. I was ready to be there for her but she was serious. She packed her stuff and left the hospital. Her last words were that she wants to see neither me or our son ever again and she kept that promise. I got the feeling that mother-in-law had something to do with it because during her pregnancy she was talking all the time about how young her daughter is and how inappropriate of a moment this is for her to have a child. I think mother-in-law somehow secretly persuaded her to take this step. So I was left alone with an infant in my hands. It definitely wasn't easy. 
I was just 21 years old, I had to leave college and work very hard to give my son everything he needed. Fortunately, I wasn't completely alone. There were people who helped me to get through the hardest period, people who babysat him while I was working, who gave me advice on how to take care of a baby and I'll be forever thankful to them. When he grew up a little, it became easier. I could send him to a kindergarten and work without asking people to take care of him while I'm not there. During all this time I hope to hear from his mother, I hope that she'll eventually come around and realize you can't just leave your child like a worthless piece of trash. But, even though I had left her my contacts and she could call me or write me a letter whenever, she didn't. I never heard from her. She never once used her rights to visit him. When he was little, he often asked me why his mother left him, why she didn't want him. And I didn't know what to answer because I always tried not to speak badly of his mother in front of him. Now my son is. 25 years old, he's a hard-working, educated young man and I'm so proud of him and I'm proud of myself that I was able to raise him to be a good person. We stopped talking about his mother a long time ago, it was his initiative, he was like, well, if she doesn't want to be with us, then it's her loss and there's nothing we can do about it. So recently mother-in-law appeared on our doorstep. Without a call, without any kind of notification, she was just there and she had come to visit her grandson. I couldn't believe my ears and at first, I almost didn't recognize her. And she was behaving as if she was a caring grandmother who had come to see her grandchild like she does all the time. Not like she was gone for 25 years. When my son saw her, he didn't recognize her either. I have shown him pictures of his mother and his grandmother just in case they show up one day but I never really thought that they would. She ran up to him and hugged him just like a loving grandmother would, asking how he's doing and how big and beautiful he has become, and he pushed her away and looked kind of confused. I told him that it's his grandmother who randomly showed up to visit him and he was like oh and walked away from her. Mother-in-law didn't take this reaction very well. She looked at me and was like what have you taught him if he doesn't even say hello to his grandmother? He's looking at me as if I'm a stranger. Haven't you told him about his mother and me or shown him our pictures? Well, technically you are a stranger, mother-in-law. He had never seen you in person, so why are you so surprised? You show up out of thin air after 25 years when he's all grown up and expect him to treat you with love. Isn't it kind of delusional? My son said, Dad did show me your picture, but I needed no picture, I needed you to be there for me. He was quite hateful with her, throwing question after question at her and mother-in-law's responses were so incredibly narrow-minded, it looked like she wasn't expecting him to ask any questions. He asked her where his mother was and mother-in-law was like oh, she's doing very well, she's living together with a great man and she has two nice kids. She has gotten over that misunderstanding about your birth. She was acting as if her daughter was the victim here. As if we were the ones who left her. He asked her why did his mother abandon him, mother-in-law said well, she was such a young girl, it would be crazy for her to have a child at that age. She had her whole life ahead of her and a baby would only be an obstacle. You must understand it, she didn't want to lose her freedom. Honestly, her daughter was older than me when our son was born, she was 24. I don't think it's too early to have a child, it's not like she was 14 or something. Actually, age has nothing to do with it. I could have given up my son too, I was very young as well. But I didn't because I loved him and I wanted to be his father. At this point I wanted to show mother-in-law the door, obviously, she wasn't welcome in our house, but my son stopped me, he had one more question. He asked why mother-in-law didn't want to be his grandmother. His mother left him, fine, but why did mother-in-law leave him too? Mother-in-law said well, I had no time to take care of you. I was a young woman too, I had my life too. And grandkids are only obligated to take care of grandparents when they're old and that's why I'm here. Then my son told her to leave and never come back, he said he doesn't want to see her ever again and he won't help her with anything. And as she was leaving, she attacked me like that's what I thought, a man alone cannot raise a proper human being. Such a rude and impolite boy, he would have turned out better in an orphanage than with you. So according to mother-in-law, the conclusion is, don't have children while you're young or if you do, feel free to leave them and then come back a few decades later and they'll love you even though they have never received any kind of care from you. But seriously, what the hell was she? Expecting? My husband's best friend lied about being in an open marriage and my husband supported him. When I first started dating my husband, one of his best friends was a lying cheating buttface. Buttface was the first in their circle of friends to get married and have children, but he still went by himself with a circle of friends to an annual week-long camping party event where he would cheat with multiple women, some as young as 17. His circle of friends politely ignored the outrageous behavior because he told everyone he had an open marriage. His wife would stay home to take care of their young children, which seemed odd, because the camping thing was very inclusive of children, but being male, none of them thought to question him about it. This behavior had gone on for several years before I came around, and was accepted as normal by the circle of friends. I was the first girlfriend to be included in the camping event, and things started out a bit rocky for me the first year with Buttface, he ended up yelling at me when his latest side chick overheard me discussing his marital status with my husband, and the side chick promptly dumped him because of his lack of full disclosure of his marital status to her prior to their recreational activities. Functional adults will be shocked to learn Buttface's wife did not know they had an open marriage. Specifically, Buttface's wife did not know he was banging other women at the campground while she was six months pregnant with their third child and was home watching their other two during the second year of my attendance. How did we find out Buttface had been lying to everyone about his open marriage? Buttface's wife confronted me on our return in front of everyone to ask about her husband's behavior on the trip. Since I knew she was pregnant, and he had been having unprotected intimacy, I answered her truthfully, all I have to say is if I were you, I wouldn't let him near me without him wearing a rubber. My first answer. 
to her had been shouldn't you be asking him that? And she had said, in front of everyone, I'm asking you, because I know you will tell me the truth. She was right. She was pregnant, he was an idiot, and her kid didn't need to have disease issues because daddy liked it better without protection. It was a tough call, and you may not agree with it, but I stand by it. Besides, open marriage, right? The open marriage liar was caught out in front of everyone when Buttface's wife went ballistic and said many things, all of which made it clear that his open marriage existed only in his mind. To say I wasn't Buttface's favorite person after that would be an understatement. He and Buttface's wife were apparently able to patch things up and recover from the debacle, and Buttface was still someone who was important to my husband, so he and I were polite when the regular social events of our circle of friends required it. A few years later he did end up being a groomsman in our wedding, and caused some problems with his plans for the bachelor party, which should entertain the drama llamas here, Buttface wanted to burn me in effigy as part of the bachelor party celebration. One of the other groomsmen was told, became properly horrified, called husband, and that was one of our wedding fights. Both of my brothers were invited to the bachelor party and I would like to think they would have been offended on my behalf, but either way, I put my foot down and announced if it happened, Buttface was out. Hubby was still if Buttface isn't in the wedding, there will be no wedding, while I was all, if Buttface pulls that stunt and you are sticking by him, damn right there will be no wedding. But it didn't happen, and our wedding did, so water under the bridge? Lest you think I was special in Buttface's eyes, he later almost derailed another wedding when he wanted a funeral theme for another bachelor party complete with casket, and the bride was offended by the insult. Thankfully, the relationship between my husband and his old friend began a natural course of drifting apart. Time passes, and then. Update my husband's best friend lied about being in an open marriage and my husband supported him. Miserable marriages don't fix themselves, and Buttface and Buttface's wife were in one, he knew it, but apparently, she didn't. Somehow, Buttface found a new girlfriend, Lauren, and apparently this helped him not be a total jerk at home, and Buttface's wife, who didn't know about Lauren, truly seemed to believe the things they were doing to strengthen their marriage were working. I was not her friend, but there were occasional conversations, and she would periodically check in with me over the years, always with profuse thanks for my candor during that rough time when she was pregnant with their youngest. So, you may ask, how did I know about Lauren, when his wife didn't? He started bringing her around our friend's circle and introducing her as his girlfriend. This time he didn't try to feed anyone the open marriage lie, he just casually expected his friends to entertain her because, hell, I had no idea why he thought they would go along with it, but the guys all did. This particular friend circle was a bunch of gamer guys who were gradually bringing women into their lives. I had been one of the first after Buttface's wife, and one of the odd things about this gaggle was not a single one of them had any sisters, so maybe that's why they were so challenged when it came to decent behavior about women and relationships. Honestly, I don't care, Buttface was very careful to not bring Lauren around when I was there, but he blew it when he tried to introduce Lauren to my hubby, who told me later he was in shock and didn't know what to do, left a little earlier than expected with a polite excuse, and came home to discuss it with me. How do you handle it when someone you care about wants you to welcome his new secret girlfriend? I wanted Buttface cut out of our lives, but hubby had loyalty to him, and didn't want to do that. They were brothers by choice and not blood. Hubby and I had some major fights about it, because to me this was all kinds of wrong. Hubby talked to Buttface without Lauren around, and found out, Lauren was comfortable with him being married slash had no concern about his kids, Buttface didn't necessarily want a divorce as in his words he still loved his wife, and Buttface had no plans on revealing his secret girlfriend to his wife. Buttface genuinely wanted his friend circle to get to know Lauren because he thought she was just awesome. Hubby and I had some major fights about this. There was no way Lauren was coming to my home, and I wasn't going to socialize with either of them while they were together. This was a compromise, I would be civil if it was just Buttface, but if he brought Lauren anywhere, Hubby and I would leave, and that meant Hubby leaving too. The situation wasn't ideal in any fashion, but Buttface had managed to involve the rest of us in his marital drama, and now it was causing problems everywhere as everyone ended up being forced to take some kind of side in the situation lest decades-long friendships be shattered. Personally, I was ready to go thermal nuclear on the whole lot of them, but to be fair, they had been hubby's friends before we were together, so I didn't have the same history, I just saw them as kind of being scum, and since I had thought better of them, it was painful. Update 2 My husband's best friend lied about being in an open marriage and my husband supported him. The casualness with which Lauren was welcomed into the friend circle was extremely upsetting to me. In several cases members of the friend circle were actively participating in providing Buttface with cover for his relationship with Lauren. One couple explained they liked Lauren better than Buttface's wife because she was more entertaining with better social skills. Other members were shrugging their shoulders and just trying to stay out of the crossfire. Women with less group history, were confused because Buttface's wife wasn't really around a lot, so they thought he was a normal single guy with a girlfriend until they had begun developing a relationship with poor Lauren as one of the other girlfriends while I wasn't around as much because of my unpleasant disapproval and refusal to socialize around Lauren. I couldn't help but ask the obvious question, if the friend circle were willing to lie and welcome Lauren for the sake of Buttface, would they be comfortable doing the same to me and my marriage? This question offended my husband, I would never behave like this, 
he stated, which would bring up some issues from our past, and cause more fights between us, which made me more insecure, and even more hostile to the people creating this situation. Lie down with dogs, get up with fleas I said to him. Why hang out with people who think this is acceptable, if you don't agree with it? And he would remind me of how Buttface had been a good friend for many years before all of this happened and was closer than blood as a brother by choice. Poison spreads. My stance on refusing to socialize with Buttface and Lauren was ridiculed by some and caused damage to other relationships. Even though I wasn't telling people who they could socialize with, I was just refusing to participate, I was being judgmental and prudish, and oddly enough, people who were okay. With marital infidelity were not okay with me not being okay with it. To this day I am still comfortable with the stance I took, which for me was about my own personal integrity. The situation helped me to clarify the boundaries I was comfortable with, and the ones I wasn't willing to cross if I was going to be true to my own vision of myself as a decent person. The line wasn't intimacy, the line was deception. I didn't pick up the phone and call Buttface's wife. My rationale was she knew he had cheated on her in the past, she had stayed, and I had no interest in being the messenger who was going to get shot for telling her what was going on behind her back, but I wasn't going to participate in normalizing this relationship. It was a horrible, horrible situation. It went on for months, and then. Then the wedding happened. Update 3, my husband's best friend lied about being in an open marriage and my husband supported him. The couple who provided cover for Buttface to cheat on his wife with Laura got married. The bride-to-be and I had talked several times, and were friendly but not close, mainly because I was distancing from her as she became closer to Lauren, but everyone was looking forward to the wedding. The wedding finally happened, and it was beautiful. Buttface and Buttface's wife were there, along with their three children. I relaxed a bit because I assumed the cheating drama wasn't going to visit the wedding. I had been anxious, but apparently the married folk were doing well, so no cheating drama, but I was wrong. While the pictures were being taken, Buttface's wife and I were chatting. Buttface's wife explained the reception was adults only so she was going to have to take the kids home because they couldn't afford a babysitter. We both looked around at the other young children who were still at the church, but assumed they weren't going to be at the reception. Buttface's wife and Buttface had discussed the fact he was going to be staying at the reception because of his close relationship with the groom. She was bummed, because she was feeling very isolated, and had been looking forward to an evening with adults, but she was putting a good face on it. Money was tight after all, especially with a husband in the bridal party. I got a very sick feeling in the pit of my stomach. They wouldn't, would they? Oh yes. They did. The reception began. Buttface's wife took their kids home, and Lauren stepped in as Buttface's date. I will never forget looking over and seeing Lauren sitting on Buttface's lap at the reception and literally making out during reception. I will never forget how awful I felt, as I realized I was participating in the public humiliation of a very nice woman, and her three young children. I will never forget seeing members of the friend's circle laughing with. The two of them. I will never forget how my empathy kicked in, as I realized I was being made an accomplice to their lies. I briefly talked with my husband. He asked what I wanted to do. I asked him to wait a few minutes. I went up and took a dance with the groom, who was very happy and a little tipsy. I asked if he knew what was going on, and he smiled and said yes, they planned the reception to be child-free so Buttface and Lauren could be together. I looked at the other children who were still there and realized the bride and the groom were lying scum. You should be ashamed. You two have created some bad karma, I told him, and then I walked off the dance floor. I walked up to the bride, told her congratulations, and I hope she was comfortable with the karma she was creating. I also told her she should be ashamed of what she had done. I did not create a scene. I spoke quietly but firmly. What they had done was wrong. We left. The saddest part was I knew Buttface's wife considered these people friends, she had welcomed most of them into her home for almost ten years when this wedding occurred. Her sons called several of them uncle and yet the members of the friend circle had looked at her with barely concealed scorn and pity while laughing with the woman her husband was cheating on her with at a wedding reception, while she took their children home because she respected the bride and the groom's child-free reception request, all while they were plotting a special evening for Buttface and Lauren. Update 4 my husband's best friend lied about being in an open marriage and my husband supported him. My friendship with the bride and the groom never recovered. A few months after the wedding, Lauren got sick of being the side piece and demanded Buttface tell Buttface's wife. Buttface's wife handled it with more class than I probably would have, she actually asked him, if you wanted a divorce, why didn't you just say so? Truthfully, I think she was a bit relieved to know she hadn't been losing her mind when she kept being suspicious of his less and less believable lies. The two were divorced, and Buttface married Lauren pretty quickly. I didn't go to that wedding. My husband was invited. He made an appearance for the wedding but did not stay for the reception. There was no joy in the occasion for my husband, and while I do not remember it, I am confident my contempt for the situation was not something I was silent about at home. The relationship between hubby and buttface wasn't the same as it had been in the olden days, and honestly, that was a relief. Time passed some more. A few years later, buttface's new marriage was having issues. He kind of knew there were problems, but the big train of clue was when he walked into his home and discovered Lauren having intimacy with another man. In their bed. 
She explained her reasoning for cheating, apparently he was not earning in Bao money to satisfy her and it came out she had been cheating on him for a long, long time. But Face was shocked and devastated. He then tried to talk it over with one of his best friends, his now ex-wife, bitterly bemoaning how Lauren could have hurt him like that by lying and cheating. And then he noticed the look on ex but Face's wife's face, and the bricks of reality fell upon his head. He apologized to her. He apologized with a sincerity that was long overdue. And then he called me to tell me he had apologized to her, and to apologize to me because now he finally got what a crappy thing he'd been doing. His ex-wife called me too, and shared the apology, it was a nice circle of closure, even though it was years after the original incidents. But Face is on his third marriage and seems to be an absolute piece of crap. He is by now in his 40s and his wife is 22, they've been married about 3 years now. And karma is real. I warned the bride and groom that covered for butt face back in the day, and my prediction, unfortunately came true. After 16 years of marriage, and one beautiful child, the two experienced a period of financial difficulty. The groom took a job in another city for the income and joined a new friend's circle. He met another woman, and his new friends liked his new girlfriend much better than the wife they never met. His teenage daughter came to visit, discovered the affair, and the marriage blew up. So, the bride in this story got to live with public humiliation and cheating and people liking someone else better than her, and not caring about her marriage, or her child or the effects her spouse's infidelity would have on the family they created together. The divorce has been finalized, and now everyone just has to live with the aftershocks. My family cut contact with me for nine years because of a lie. Now it's my turn for revenge. My cousin accused me of something I didn't do, and my family were so disgusted by me that they cut contact. I just feel so lost on what to do, I grew up in what was probably the most normal of normal households. My parents worked a lot, but still managed to care for me and my three older sisters. We were never super close as a family, but never had any issues either. The same goes for my extended family. They always lived a few hours away, but we saw each other during summer holidays or Christmas and always got along great. But when we got older we naturally grew apart as everyone had their own lives. I'm 31 now. In 2014, when I was 22 and attending uni, I got a phone call from my mother that turned my life upside down. I remember I didn't even answer at first, because I was gaming with friends. But she called again immediately after the first call. This was an unwritten rule in the family. If you call twice like that, it's important. Like someone died important. So when she called again, I excused myself and answered, only to hear chaos in the other end. Like people were arguing. But when my mom realized I had answered, it sounded like she went to another room and closed the door. I just asked what was going on and I heard she was crying. My memory of this conversation is a bit blurry, but she basically asked me if I had something to confess to regarding Eve. Eve is my cousin on my mom's side and is 7 years younger than me, 15 at the time. At that point, I hadn't even seen Eve for several years. I just said no and asked what this is about. She just cried even harder and started accusing me of actually assaulting Eve back when we were children. That Eve had told everything to my sister, and that my sister told my mother and my aunt. Eve had told them that back when she was 9, and I 16, she'd been playing in my room when I came in and started feeling her under her clothes and kissing her. My mother screamed at me to say something, but I couldn't even speak. It was all so absurd. I remember thinking that must be some bad joke. The last thing I remember saying was that it's not true and that Eve is lying. But then my mom goes on saying that Eve gave such a detailed description of where and how. Then she kept asking something like did you do this? Did you do this? And I just screamed back at her no. Each time. It all ended with my mom putting me on speaker and both my mom and dad saying that they don't want anything to do with me and never to contact them again. Two of my sisters texted me later that day, pretty much saying that I'm disgusting and then blocked me. I know it's weird, but after that call I went to have a long shower. To this day I still don't know why I did that. After calming down, I started calling and texting everyone, even Eve. No one answered and the ones who hadn't blocked my number by then quickly did so. The only thing I heard back was from my father who texted me to stop contacting them and that they need to heal. That was 9 years ago and I haven't spoken to anyone in my family since that day. To say this effed me up is an understatement. I was living in a haze for weeks after that and hardly ate at all. It didn't help that this was right before I was supposed to defend my bachelor's thesis and was already stressed out. Luckily my co-writer sent something was up and saved me by controlling the conversation so that I got the easy parts. Without him I am sure I would have failed. Needless to say, no one came to my graduation. Then started the worst period of my life. I spent the first year expecting the cops to knock on my door and arresting me for sexual abuse. I didn't land any jobs, just living off my saved money. I drank a lot and did oxy. I also grew resentful and violent. The only reason I didn't hurt anyone is because no one was around. My neighbor called the cops on me once after I had smashed a glass. But I managed to convince the officers that I had just dropped it, and they went away since there were no others inside my apartment. Instead of sleeping, I spent my nights planning how I could hurt Eve and make sure no one ever found out. Even thinking how I could actually do the things she'd accused me of, but much worse. I know, I'm not proud of that, I landed my first real job in my field in late 2015. Only then did things start to improve. I focused all my time on my job, as it gave me something normal to do. Recovery was a slow process, but I drank less, sober now for 4 plus years, and smiled more. I lived cheap and earned good money, 
so I made a point of buying myself a nice gift for my birthdays, a VR headset, a motorcycle, Lego etc. And last year I moved from my shitty apartment and bought a small house. It was an old dream of mine to have my own garage and a garden to care for. This has boosted me even more. So my life is okay now. I still have problems. I've been on antidepressants for the last few years and while they help, it's not in a happy way. They simply remove the dark thoughts and replace them with dead ones. My trust in other people is close to non-existent. I've tried dating, but only been on two dates with two different women. It's really hard to speak like a normal person when it comes down to it. And what would I tell a potential partner when she asked about my family? Oh you know they accused me of a heinous crime and we're not talking anymore. But I didn't do it, I swear. My field is very male-dominated, so the only woman I really speak to is my therapist, who I like a lot. If this text was difficult to follow, I apologize. I'm not good with words on the best of days, and I started rambling a bit when it all came back to me. It's already getting long so I will fast forward to my current issue. A few days ago, I received a text from my mother. It felt unreal and I was scared to open it at first, so I just stared at the notification. For hours before opening it. Yesterday, another text followed. Translated, they basically say, text 1, hi, it's been so long since we talked. We miss you and want to know how you're doing. Here she writes a long text about my sisters and how my nieces and nephews are getting big. I didn't even know I was an uncle. Know that we love you and always will. Mom and dad text too, hi, we understand if you don't want to talk to us after what happened, but please listen. Last month, the subject of you was brought up at a family gathering. During this, Eve was downplaying everything that had happened to her. It got so awkward that she finally admitted that nothing happened and that she probably just dreamt it. We were all appalled by this. When we last spoke, we wanted to protect Eve and did the only thing we thought we could do. We know that's not excusing how you were treated. What Eve did was wrong and we're all angry at her. We have called everyone that knew and told them the truth. We all want to speak with you and your sisters want you to meet their families. Please write back if you can find it in you to forgive us. Mom and dad so yeah. That's my situation right now. I haven't answered, but they no doubt know I've seen it. Truth be told, I'm seething. So many old, SHT memories are now stirring again. I don't want to forgive them and I wouldn't trust myself to be in the same room as them right now. Part of me wants to call my family and unleash everything on them, to guilt them with everything I went through until they all hit their rock bottom. Then dedicate my life to making my cousin's life as miserable as possible. The other part wants to ignore them and continue with my okayish life with my motorcycle and my garden to keep me company. I don't have any friends. The only people I speak to are my co-workers, but we're not really close. I've called my therapist clinic, but they told me she's on vacation and won't be available for weeks, and I don't want anyone else than her. Cheat on me when I have cancer? Let's see how you like it when you're disabled. Plus update. My girlfriend and I dated for four years and had what I thought was a great relationship. We were both well-established professionals who both owned homes in the same neighborhood and both had daughters in the home. Her daughter was 11 and mine was 16 when we met. We had actually planned to get married, build a house, and raise the two together. We planned the house build because she had recently been diagnosed with a neurological disease that would eventually put her in a wheelchair, and need something Ada-friendly. During the planning stages, I began doing landscape and construction projects on her home to increase the resale value. All in, I invested roughly $30,000 into the home, running everything through my side construction business for tax, permitting, and resale purposes. We had a contract that payment would be made upon the sale of the home. I produced invoices for each and every project, but never pushed for payment because of the prior agreement. Fast forward six months and we're looking at property to develop and finalize drawings on the home when I began feeling ill. I couldn't eat, constantly vomiting and passing blood. I began noticing that my abdomen looked swollen, which was odd because we were both very clean eaters and were in the gym every day. So I went to the doctor and began having tests done. During this time, she began having small cognitive issues, and the stress of her current position was exacerbating her condition, so she took a $20,000 per annum cut in pay along with a lesser position inside the company. After a month or so of different tests, and a biopsy, it came back that I had a golf ball-sized tumor in my stomach, and would need to begin chemotherapy. So I began chemo and radiation treatments, which made me extremely ill. She was spending time helping around my place on the weekends and staying over more, to the point that they were both at my home, more than theirs. At this point, I suggested that we go ahead and put one of our houses on the market, and move in together until the new house was built. I have great supplemental insurance as well as a long-term illness plan, so using that coupled with the sale of one of our houses would push us through comfortably, and help ease the financial stress on her. Shortly after this discussion, she became extremely distant. Her daughter wasn't coming down and hanging out with mine anymore, she had excuses for not getting together. She quit driving me to treatments and stopped staying over. She then dropped a bomb. A sentence that will forever be burned into my psyche, I love you, but I can't see myself taking care of someone this sick in the long term, and I don't think we should see each other any longer. She broke up with me over text. But it only got worse from there. Update her breaking up with me completely broke me, I won't lie. This was the first woman I had ever opened up to and planned a life with since my wife died when my children were one and three. However, I tried to be mature about it. I forced myself to understand her position and to accept what I could not change. I calmly gathered all of her things, packed them neatly, loaded them in my truck, and took them to her house to leave on the back porch while she was at work in order to avoid any awkward exchanges. Walking around the back and under the porch cover, I put down a box and saw her in her back living room, on the couch having sex with a man that she had introduced to me as a lifelong friend. 
I had dinner and drinks with this man and his girlfriend. We had gone on vacation with them as well. I never spoke of the incident with her, and simply sent her a text later, explaining that I would leave her things on my side porch to pick up at her convenience. I discovered eight or nine months later from his now ex-girlfriend that they had broken up due to him confessing that he had been sleeping with my girlfriend, dating back to about the time we were finishing drawings on the new home. Now I'm pissed. At this point, I had finished chemo and radiation for the time being and was feeling healthier. I was going through some much-neglected paperwork when I ran across a file that contained $32,680 in unpaid, long-overdue invoices, which were promptly sent to my attorney to begin lien proceedings on the home. It turns out that I couldn't have done this a moment too soon because she was set to put her house on the market. Coupled with interest over the course of, what was then, 19 months overdue, the invoices were hefty. That, along with the agreement of settling them when the house was sold and attorney fees, left her with roughly $10,000 after the sale of the home and settling her current mortgage. She promptly had to back out of the purchase of another home and moved in with her oldest daughter, sister-in-law, and two grandchildren. She also had to leave her job and begin receiving disability. I ran into her a little over a year ago and she looked as if she had aged 20 years, and was in the wheelchair we had talked about. We chatted cordially but briefly and I excused myself and went on with my day. A few days later, her younger daughter called me and spoke of my running into her mom, and asked if we could hang out sometime. I gave a vague answer, thanked her for calling and again, went on with my day. The ex then called me a week or so later and began apologizing for leaving me as she did. Again, cordial but short. I thanked her for calling and hung up. She began texting and this went on for several weeks until once she asked if I could ever see us rekindling what we had, to which I replied, I can't see myself taking care of someone so sick in the long term. Remember the box on your back porch? Did you think that your friend brought that over to you from my house? Good luck to you. Goodbye. My jealous fiancé's brother's wife copied my ring but with a bigger carrot size and I've had enough. My fiancé's brother is already married. His wife has repeatedly tried to start feuds with me throughout the four years I've been with my fiancé. She makes a competition out of everything, and is one of those women that says she doesn't have any girlfriends because they're too much drama. She constantly copies things I'm doing, buying etc. and then tries to outdo me. I've tried ignoring it the best I can but some things really trigger me. Example, our birthdays are a couple days apart and for the last two years she has tried to pick my actual birthday day to have her party and invite all mutual friends and family. It doesn't sound like much but these things add up. When I decide I'm throwing a barbecue, she throws one the day before. Stuff like that. Last year my fiancé proposed to me with a beautiful almost 2.5 carat radiant ring. I really didn't expect anything big and was just excited to be engaged, so he really blew me away with the ring. I had sent multiple inspiration pictures and he literally gave me my dream ring. Less than five days later I was hanging out with my fiancé, sister-in-law, a friend, and my sister, when she announced that she's getting a ring upgrade. They'd been married only five months at that point, and engaged not even a year yet, so I was confused. She went on to say she didn't get her dream ring and she and my fiancé's brother were planning this all along. She then mentioned she was considering getting the exact same ring as me, just bigger. When I pointed this out she said oh I didn't even notice. She just kept talking about how hers was so small and how my ring shape looks bigger. My fiancé discussed this with his brother about how crazy this sounds and will look, and he said he had no clue what he was talking about and that they had talked about upgrading her ring but that was years down the line. She got into a huge fight with me about this saying I was trying to sabotage her and make her look bad in front of her husband. Whatever. Fast forward to now. Well she's done it. She just posted on her social media and she's sporting an exact replica of my ring, completely different cut from her old one, but with a huge diamond. I will always treasure my ring, and wouldn't consider an upgrade at any point because of the memory and the amount of thought and effort my fiancé put into this. But my god, do I want to scream right now. Who upgrades their ring one year into their marriage and why not just get a different cut if all you care about is a big diamond? Why did it have to be the same cut and type of ring as mine? Please tell me I'm not crazy and this is ridiculous. Do I confront her on this? My wedding is in six months and I feel like I should keep the peace but part of me wants to tell her off. My husband took his female best friend on a weekend getaway to Paris without asking me, so I exposed them. Plus update. Throughout the four years that my husband and I have been married we have only ever encountered one major problem, his girl best friend. I would already be uncomfortable with the idea of that, but the fact that she is my husband's ex from high school is the real point of contempt here. We have argued about it many times in the past before, and each time he sticks to his guns, claiming he is just a friend, that their relationship is in the past and that I have nothing to worry about. However, her actions go against what my husband tells me. I have been around her quite a lot, and she has a very flirty personality. She will flirt with guys she does not know because she thinks it's amusing, she will grab guys' arms and lush over big they are and so on. She does this with my husband too, even in front of me. There has been many occasions where she downright flirts with him in front of me, then downplays her actions or claims she is just joking and messing around when I call her out on it. My husband usually backs her up. Needless to say, we don't like each other very much. While it is true she has crossed boundaries before, I have never found evidence of an actual physical affair going on. At most semi-flirtatious texts when she is drunk and my husband entertains her. I do trust my husband and always have, 
but what happened last week really made me doubt everything in our relationship. So her birthday was two days ago. I knew my husband was planning a big gift for her, as for the few months leading up to it he was talking a lot about it, but whenever I would ask what the birthday present was, he would never fully reveal the answer. It planted doubts in my mind, but as I said I trusted him so I didn't suspect much. Well, my husband spent the night before her birthday awake most of the night doing something downstairs, I didn't question it then but I now. Suspect he was packing. On the morning of her birthday, my husband woke me up and told me he was heading out. I asked him where he was going and he told me he was off to celebrate his best friend's birthday. He said not to text or call him and that he was okay. The fact he told me not to text or call worried me and I asked him why. He didn't give a direct answer again and muttered something about it being nothing to worry about. How I wish I could go back and confront him fully then and there. My instincts were telling me that whatever he was doing was super shady and that I should pry him for more information, but for some reason I naively trusted him and let him get into his car and drive away. That was the last time I saw him. I spent the whole day driving myself crazy, trying not to text him about it. The thoughts of him cheating boiled in my mind and during the evening I had to invite my sister over just to keep me sane. I vented to her about it, and told her I suspected an affair between them. My sister told me that from her point of view that's exactly what it looked like but we couldn't be so sure yet. She urged me to wait the rest of the day and not talk to him, and if by nighttime he is not back call him and ask questions. Sho also advised me to confront him when he gets back and to be prepared for a fight and emotional manipulation. After a long talk about it we decided to throw on a movie and spend the rest of the evening winding down. Halfway through the movie my sister was scrolling her phone when she noticed my husband's Instagram story. She muttered what the f to herself which caught my attention. She showed me the story and it destroyed me. I couldn't believe what I was looking at. My husband was at an airport in Paris, and his best friend's hand was in the frame. I looked through my phone, to see nothing on his account. This idiot, blocked me from his story, but forgot to block my sister. I broke down crying immediately. It was true, they were. Having an affair, and were trying their best to hide it from me. But my husband exposed himself. I cried for a while as my sister comforted me. My husband, the man I loved dearly, spent months planning a getaway for him and his affair partner for her birthday while hiding it all from me. I don't think I can accurately describe how much it hurt, every description in the world would be an understatement. I decided on a divorce there and then, because as much as I love him, I cannot forgive such a manipulative cheater. Then my sister suggested exposing the affair. I'm usually not the petty type, but in that moment I was filled with a lot of rage towards my husband. My sister screenshotted the story of my husband and sent it to me. I then sent it to his father, saying that his son was with another woman in Paris, as I am clearly at home, and sent him a pic of myself at home as proof. For context, my boyfriend's dad is the one who raised him. His mother cheated on his father when he was three and the mother and her affair partner ran away, leaving my soon-to-be ex-husband and father alone. His father has always been very strict and clear as to how wrong cheating is and how as a self-respecting man, he should never cheat. My husband has seen firsthand how cheating destroys families, and that's what was instilled into him by his dad. His father thanked me for telling him and hung up. I got a call from my husband an hour later shouting at me. Apparently his father has disowned him for what he did. He had the audacity to tell me I ruined his holiday. We had a huge argument over the phone about his affair and he ended it by saying he doesn't want to talk about this anymore over the phone anymore, but apparently he can explain everything when he's home. But he told me he's not cutting the getaway short. He gets home later tonight and I'm scared of what's to come. Update so my husband came back from his trip and we talked. The conversation was. Not what I expected. So I. Took the advice from my sister, which was when he came home not to attack him right away. She told me that's what he'll expect, and instead I should give him a minute to unpack, unwind and all. So when my husband came home I didn't ask about it, but rather just told him it's nice to see him. He didn't mention anything about the trip either, and it was only an hour after or so that we got to talking. Once again, I followed my sister's suggestions of instead of accusing him off the bat, asking him to explain himself. My husband started off saying he knows it looks bad. But it's not what it looks like. He told me that he did not go over there to sleep together. He told me that the reason they went over, is because his best friend's grandma is very old and lives in France. They are extremely close and have not met up in a few years, and my husband figured he would surprise his best friend by booking her tickets to visit her grandma. I asked him where they stayed and he said they slept in separate rooms in the grandparents' house. I then asked him why he didn't just book her two tickets and tell her to invite whoever she wanted. He said that's what he did, and she insisted that he came with her. He states he felt obliged as it was his best friend. I sighed. I knew he was lying. You see I spent the last two days going through his emails looking for things, and he had booked a hotel room for two for the weekend getaway. This was a few months ago. I then told him to explain the hotel room for two. He froze, he started claiming he didn't know what I was talking about. But I kept pressing, demanding an explanation. And he finally caved. He says they shared a hotel room and they kissed. He swears up and down that they only kissed, she wanted to take it further but he stopped himself when he realized what he was doing. 
I was expecting this, but it still hurts so much. He went on to say we can fix this, and that I should forgive. When none of that worked he became angry. He yelled that it was my fault he was disowned by his father. That I'm a vengeful beach. After he said that I had enough and left the house. He did not try to stop me physically, but he did keep yelling at me. I'm now at my sister's house and he won't stop calling me after I texted him that we're done and that I'm filing for divorce. My roommate calls my boyfriend our boyfriend. I, 19, have been dating my boyfriend Will, 20, for about 6 months now. I have been in relationships before but this is definitely my first serious, and healthy, one, and I'm really happy with him. We met in our hometown but we go to different universities that are about 2 hours apart, however we try to see each other whenever we can, maybe about every 3 weeks. Usually, Will will come and visit me, because A, he has a car so it's cheaper slash more convenient for him, plus bus routes between our cities no longer exist since Greyhound Shutter B, a lot of his courses are still online only, whereas I have in-person lectures and C, my house is a lot nicer than his. Whenever he visits, he stays for 4 to 5 days which my roommates are okay with. He's also very nice and helpful, if I'm doing chores he'll help or he'll help take out the trash slash wash dishes slash make me breakfast etc. One of my roommates Cass, 19, was dumped near the end of September, and since then, I felt like she has been weird with Will. A few examples, sometimes he'll cook for me if I'm busy at school or working late at the lab, and oftentimes he'll make enough for my roommates too. Almost every time this happens, Cass makes comments about how he's so sweet and that she wishes she had someone like him and how her ex could never. Will and I usually reassure her and say she'll definitely find someone who'll treat her right but she just looks at him expectantly. Expecting what? I don't know, when he helps with manly stuff like taking out the trash, installing a hook in my room, moving heavy things, she always makes sure to linger around and comment about how strong he is and how I'm lucky to have such a fit partner, whenever he visits, we literally can't avoid her. If we go out, Cass will ask to come with us. My roommates and I use an app that tracks our location for safety reasons, and when I go out with Will and don't tell her she'll usually text me asking me where. I'm doing what my plans are if I want to hang out etc. We try to stay in my room, but if Will goes into the kitchen or something Cass will always happen to wander in. We have to lock my bedroom door when we sleep to make sure she doesn't come in. I'm not much of a drinker, but after our midterms Cass wanted to have a little thing with just the roommates. It was fun, we drank a little and watched movies. I'm pretty lightweight so I got sloshed pretty fast and at some point I was calling Will, and when Cass found out I was calling him she was like is that Will? And kept ripping the phone from my hands very aggressively, she's a lot stronger than I am, and really loudly started talking about her intimate life and asking him about his, saying shit like make sure you hit it deep. This is pretty in character for Cass who claims to enjoy making people uncomfortable and makes these kinds of comments for shock value, but I felt like she should have turned it off around my boyfriend. She was only tipsy at this point, not really drunk. Overall, anytime he's nice to her she'll say things like haha it's almost like you're my boyfriend and whenever she refers to him around me she'll call him our boyfriend as a joke, but I still feel weird about it. Will finds this all very uncomfortable and tries his best to avoid Cass as best he can or shut her down when she makes those comments. I'm not sure if I should bring it up with her, because on one hand, I'm very uncomfortable, but on the other hand, I feel like she'll just deny everything or say it's all for jokes and maybe get hostile with me. I was alone with one of my roommates Jen, and I started to bring up Cass' behavior around Will. I didn't even get a sentence in before Jen stopped me and said I know. She's been weird. Apparently, Jan and our fourth roommate Eva have discussed this before, but they weren't sure if I even noticed because I didn't seem to react. Jan is definitely the closest to Cass, we all went to high school together, but I was only really friends with Eva at that time. She said she brought it up privately with Cash after Will's last visit and Cass just did that thing where she talks and incoherently defends herself. Eva and Jen agreed to step in if crap got out of hand with her. Cass was very excited for Will's visit, and would say stuff like oh I can't wait to see him or just a few more days. I have a test from 7 to 9 p.m. on his second day here, and apparently she talked to Jen about picking out a movie for the two of them to watch while I wrote my biochem test. She settled on Sinister 2 for anyone wondering. Jen said that she was out of line but again, Cass just incoherently defends herself. Every time she made comments like that my roommates and I would just silently give her a look and say um, okay, anyways and change the subject, which seemed to at least make her self-conscious. Cass was all over him as soon as he got here, pouting and saying where's my hug? Jen hugged her instead and we used this time to escape into my room. Day 2 rolls around and as soon as I'm out of the house, she tries to get Will to watch the movie with her, saying she really wants to watch it but doesn't think she can do it alone. Will politely declines and continues playing video games in my room, and she leaves. Throughout the rest of the visit I'm firm with her, telling her she can't come on our dates, saying she's being weird when she makes comments about how hot he is or how he's our boyfriend. Will has also done what one commenter suggested and just point blank says that he's my boyfriend and that he'll never be hers. At some point, he's so aggravated he stops talking to her or acknowledging her at all because he was worried he would yell at her. I've never heard him raise his voice before this. As time wore on, I felt like she got increasingly desperate for Will's attention. This is the absolute craziest part. Just now, while I was showering, Cass went into my room. Where Will is, in her underwear and a bathrobe, saying she knows he's playing hard to get but that he can't resist her, barf. Will started yelling at her to get the heck out, which alerted myself and my roommates. Eva and Jen dragged a tearful Cass out of my room, she even called me a skinny b-word on her way out. I think they're going to drop her off at a friend's house tonight. I'm just effing floored. I really did not expect her to go nuclear like this but goddamn. My manipulative fiancé has been super secretive about his phone throughout our entire relationship. 
I snooped through and the reason broke my heart. I'm feeling oddly at ease right now even though my heart has just been shattered. From the very beginning, my fiancé and I had a fantastic relationship, I had never been happier in my life. We have lived together for two years and adopted two dogs together. We still talk and laugh every single day like school children and we have great intimacy constantly. So what the F went wrong? Since the beginning of our relationship, my fiancé has always been protective of his phone. It isn't much of an exaggeration to say that I don't even think I know what his phone looks like, I couldn't tell you confidently what brand it is or what color it is. He would never answer texts or calls in my presence and always stated that it's simply because he's trying to be respectful and doesn't want to be one of those couples who are sucked into their phones instead of enjoying each other's company. I understood and accepted this until we moved in together and he still would hardly ever use his phone around me, and when he did, he would turn it the other way so that I couldn't see the screen. He always claimed he wasn't doing this however, and still said he's just trying to be respectful but that he'll try to be better about it. There have been a few times where I have walked into the room from behind him while he's been on his phone, and I could swear I saw him very quickly switching apps, before putting his phone away. He's always denied this as well. He never tells me who he's talking to, or says it's his parents or best friend who both live in his home country so I have no one to ask to confirm who he's talking to. He's always super supportive and reassuring and tells me that it's just him being weird and quirky but he promises that he's not being inappropriate. Contrary to all of this, I am very open with my phone. I am always comfortable. Showing him what I'm watching or who I'm texting, I will hand him my phone to Google something for me or do whatever the hell. I try to respect his privacy because I definitely feel that it is important, but at the same time, I have always felt that he was being a little sketchy. I have never been one to snoop either, so that never occurred to me and I've just accepted that my fiancé just really values his privacy and I need to accept that, because he has given me no reason to distrust him. Until yesterday. I don't know what came over me. I'm telling you, it was like I was possessed. It was an urge like nothing I've ever felt before. I don't know why I did it. But he went to take a shower and left his phone on the table and I did it. Snatched it right up, guessed his passcode, and went through every single thing, text messages, call log, email, photo albums even his notepad. And I found it. I found everything. A full-blown effing affair that's been going on as far back as I looked. Nothing was hidden. He's been effing her at her house, all over our house, in our bed, in our car, in her car and at her parents' house. Yeah, he met her family. They love him apparently. He effed her in the brand new bed I bought for our new house before we even effed in it and also joked about christening our new house with her. It's mostly been happening while I've been at work. He tells her he loves her, that he's never been happier with anyone else, that he wants to marry her and have babies with her and the whole nine yards. And yes, she knows about me. They spend quite a bit of time talking about how boring, fat and ugly I am, and how tired he is of dragging along through life with me, and how much better she is than me. They routinely make jokes about how bad I am at intimacy, with him saying that he can't find it underneath all of my roles. He says he can't wait when he's going to get out of this hellhole with me and take both of our dogs and ride off into the sunset. With her. She also sounds surprisingly, and hilariously, insecure for being the woman who's been effing my fiancé in my bed for God knows how long. I hope my fiancé is as good at reassuring her as he was at reassuring me. I put his phone down and quietly waited. When he came out and greeted me with his usual hi babe. I suddenly felt like I had swallowed an entire bucket of 10-inch CCKS and didn't know what to say, so I didn't say anything. I was ready to scream and shout and confront and point fingers and cry. But when he came out, I didn't do anything. He plopped on the couch next to me and just asked me if I was ready to continue our show and we just went about the rest of our day. I haven't slept since. I projectile vomited last night because I realized that the spot on the sheets a couple weeks ago that he told me was one of our dogs uncharacteristically peeing the bed might be. Oh. Oh no. Jesus effing Christ. He hasn't even noticed that something is up and I can't even believe that I've hidden it so well. I haven't even cried yet. Part 2 my manipulative fiancé has been super secretive about his phone throughout our entire relationship. I snooped through and the reason broke my heart. I don't know how long I can keep this up. I called my landlord today. She was super happy to hear from me as we have a good relationship, and I ended up breaking down and telling her everything that was going on. She immediately told me to swing by. I texted my fiancé and told him that I was working a little late, which isn't unusual, I sometimes get stuck working 16-hour shifts. My landlord immediately started talking to me about other properties she has, but most of them won't be available until at least the summer. But, if I could hold out that long, she would be able to get me into one and wouldn't make me pay extra to break my lease, fill out an application, or pay her immediately for a security deposit. This is so extremely helpful, because most of my money goes towards bills and I wouldn't have a lot of wiggle room to save up for first month's rent, a security deposit, and the extra amount to break the lease. I agreed to her idea. Now, all I have to do is keep my composure and act, act, act my butt off for the next few months, and all of my savings will be going towards new furniture for my new place. When I got home, my fiancé was extremely concerned because he apparently tried calling me at work to ask me a question and they told him I had left. 
he asked me why I didn't respond to his texts or calls. I lied and told him that it must have been when I was running something over to the other clinic that I work at, which is not unusual for me to do. He believed me. But not before asking for reassurance that I wasn't cheating on him. He told me that his mind immediately thought the worst and that I had lied and was off with someone else, and asked me to please just let him know if I'm going somewhere unexpected so that he doesn't worry. I lost it. I laughed so hard. He laughed with me, obviously not. Realizing that I was not laughing for the same reason he was. Then when I didn't say anything, he got mad. This time, flat out accusing me of cheating and demanding to know why I lied about staying the extra hours. He got a little aggressive and raised his hand, he never laid it onto me but he did raise it. On the spot I managed to come up with a lie that I was working on a birthday surprise for him with my sister, his birthday is in a month so this was believable. This piece of crap had the audacity to hug and kiss me, but told me not to lie to him again and just tell him the truth instead of making him suspicious. Part 3, My manipulative fiancé has been super secretive about his phone throughout our entire relationship. I snooped through and the reason broke my heart. I kept putting on an act for my fiancé and told my fiancé that I had been feeling ill, and that my doctor advised that we reassess my birth control situation and avoid intimacy for the time being. He was extremely supportive and made me soup when I got home and coddled me all day. How sweet. Gag. The same night, while he was asleep, I ninjaed his phone again. It turns out that this affair has been going on for about six months. I found that he and the mistress are currently arguing about me, which was super weird to witness by the way, considering that we don't even fight and have definitely never fought as viciously as this before. She is currently begging him to leave me and be with her. I also discovered that she left her own partner months ago to be with mine, around the time that my fiancé told her that he wanted to run off with her with my dogs in tow as I mentioned previously. Surprisingly, my fiancé has just told her that he now doesn't want to leave me. He told her that he does still love me and doesn't want to hurt me, and didn't mean what he said a few months ago but that he was just caught up in the moment. However, he said he is willowing to still have intimacy with her, just not run away together. How sweet of him, effing degenerate. His last text to her last night was that he feels like a huge piece of crap and does not wish to further destroy our relationship and is taking back the statement of still having intimacy. Yikes. Too bad that he has already made his bed, and soon she will be able to have everything she wants and lie in it with him. I felt a little sad for the other woman. But it dissipated quickly however, after seeing how much venom she spits upon my mere existence. She goes through his phone constantly and starts fights with him over how nice he is to me and how much better he apparently treats me than he does her. I took screenshots everything. I was originally only going to take a few, but I ended up pretty much taking their entire message thread because I feel like everything ended up being juicy. There were some emails that I took as well, and also some pictures of them together with the date and timestamp, many of them having been taken while I was at conferences out of town when he said he was just hanging out at home. I also notated her phone number and email address. I will likely never reach out to her, but just in case. However, today, I received some amazing news. My landlord called and told me that one of her tenants has decided to not renew their lease and will be moving out. The house is kind of a mess, but I can move in in two weeks. Originally it was three months. Now I am literally scrambling to schedule my movers in time. I am shrieking with joy. I told her I didn't care. It could be a closet filled with 30 knife-wielding mutated rats suffering from explosive diarrhea, please just let me have it. I will pay for that dangerous poop closet. I'm going in tomorrow to talk to her more about it and figure out exact dates and the financial situation, she's going to let me just pay half of the deposit upon move-in, and the other half later. My co-workers had also gotten back to me, their landlord won't let them have another roommate, which we were kind of expecting, but they said that I could stay there for a couple nights anyway if I needed to. They, along with their boyfriends, will be coming with me on my moving day to help with my movers to make it as quick as possible. I have also decided that I am going to take my couch and my bed, and we are going to burn the sheets and blankets in my new backyard at my housewarming at last party. My ex will return home one day with nowhere to sit nor sleep, and without my help with finances, it may be some time before he can replace the furniture. It's already almost over. I still might bail, make some excuse, and stay in a hotel for the next few weeks, just because I want to be out so badly. But it's almost over. I can almost taste it. Scheduling the movers made it feel so real and I felt as though I breathed my first breath in a week. I didn't realize how trapped I had felt, but I just kept making all these plans and coming up with solutions that led to me running into problem after problem. But now it's almost over. Part 4 my manipulative fiancé has been super secretive about his phone throughout our entire relationship. I snooped through and the reason broke my heart. This last weekend, my ex confessed. I put this in quotations because it was a large Dutch oven full of steaming horse crap. I came home from work one morning and he was waiting for me, which is odd, because he's usually asleep. He said that we needed to talk. We sat down together and he told me his tall tale, that a woman he had met, his mistress, at his co-worker's wedding had been contacting him on and off for a few months after receiving his number from a mutual friend, and kept asking to meet because she found him attractive and wanted to get to know him better. 
he had never responded to her flirtatious messages or requests to meet up, but would sometimes chat with her. Recently, he told her that he was flattered but was happily engaged, and asked her to stop contacting him because he didn't think they could be friends since she kept pursuing him and was getting progressively insistent. He stated that this woman then became angry and began threatening him and insulting him, like some typical nice girl or whatever, telling him that he'd let her on. He apologized for never telling me, but he didn't think it was important because he had either ignored her or things were pretty innocent, but decided to tell me now because of her shocking reaction when he asked her to stop. He promised me that that was all that happened, and offered to show me the messages if I wanted to see them. I was quiet for a few minutes. He looked extremely worried and begged me to say something. My mind was racing and my heart was beating out of my chest. After every sentence he spoke, in my head I was saying, lie lie another lie. Pretty good lie, but still a lie. Lie. Wow, the truth? Nope just kidding lie. I wanted to confront him, tell him what I knew, point in his face, show him the screenshots I took, scream at him. But again, I didn't do any of those things, instead I said that I was really disappointed and hurt that he kept this information from me, but I told him that I trusted him and did not need to see his phone. I asked him to please just continue to be honest with me from now on. My ex held me tightly, apologized many more times, promised to make it up to me, and continued to reassure me that he was being honest. He said he loved me and wanted to be with me forever and would never hurt me, I was his dream girl and he couldn't possibly be happier with me. I asked him if he was sure he had nothing else to tell me. He looked me in my eyes and said he didn't, he promised. I asked if he ever met up with her, platonically or otherwise. He said he only spoke with her and hung out with her briefly among others at the wedding as he was a groomsman and she a bridesmaid. He also confessed that when he was worried that I had cheated on him a couple of weeks ago, he got extremely scared because it made him rack his brain trying to think of whether he had done something that would make me angry or cause me to stray and that while he feels silly about it now for thinking that I had cheated, it had put the fear of God in him, for lack of a better phrase, he then felt super guilty and decided to come clean because even though I'm not cheating, he was so worried that he wants to make sure there is a clean slate. I wanted to vomit. I wanted to take a hot shower and melt the skin off and then swim in a pool of lemon juice. I could not believe the nerds on the slimy worm of a man. Either he ended things with the mistress and is expecting blowback and trying to cover for it now in case she reaches out to me, or she dumped him and he's trying to crawl back to me. Or maybe he's still seeing her. I completely shut down. I was cold and distant. He noticed. He apologized to me every day, asking me if I was still mad. He offered many times to show me the messages to assure me that nothing else happened. He asked me if there was anything he could do to make me happy again. He told me he knew he deserved it for not coming forward sooner, but he promised he wasn't lying about anything, he was just being an idiot and didn't think it was important, but he sees now that it was and he would be just as upset if the tables were turned. He cried a few times. I brushed him off and told him I would get over it and he just needed to give me time. He agreed. And then the day finally came, and I left. I moved into my new house yesterday. It was pretty uneventful, and even kind of fun. After I got the text from my ex confirming that he made it to work safely, my friends and their boyfriends came by to meet the movers with me, and we had my entire house cleared within 45 minutes. We laughed and joked the entire time. They assured me that they would be my bodyguards if my ex showed up. I scanned the house a few times before I left and felt very satisfied, the only things left are a dining table, a small TV, and an entertainment center in our bedroom that he bought, and of course all of his personal things. Other than that, everything else is gone. After much thought, I decided that I was not going to leave any of the screenshots that I took, however, I am still keeping them in case I need them. I wanted him to be reeling over what I may or may not know. I want him to relive the day he confessed and I hope he feels absolutely horrified when he realizes that I knew the entire time. Instead, I printed an email he sent me a few months ago, which was a very long ranting about how much he loved me couldn't wait to marry me and have children with me and buy our first house together, and how lucky he was to have such a loyal, devoted, and hard-working partner. He detailed how he would never do anything to jeopardize our relationship. He sent me this email three days before the text messages between his mistress about how boring, fat, and ugly I was, and how he couldn't wait to run away with her and start their perfect lives together. I put this email into an envelope and wrote his mistress's name on the front of it. I left it on the kitchen counter, with my engagement ring and keys on top. I took one more look around and then shut the door on our home in this chapter of my life. When I got in my car, I cried for the first time since the day I first found the messages. I had to pull over and my friends comforted me while I cried my eyes out, snot bubbling, snorting, lip quivering, put Kim K to shame crying. My heart broke into a million pieces all at once. My friends pet my hair, held my hands, and cried with me too. They're so good to me and I'm so thankful that I finally decided to stop being so antisocial and reach out to them. The best thing that has come out of this situation was bonding with these two women. I changed my number today, but my ex is tech savvy, I don't know if I won't be found. Part 5, my manipulative fiancé has been super secretive about his phone throughout our entire relationship. I snooped through and the reason broke my heart. My worst fears have come true, 
My ex tracked me down and found out where I live. I had been trying to be as careful as I could be, I cashed in all my vacation time from work and I mostly stayed home, but when I did go out, I didn't frequent my usual grocery stores, restaurants or dog parks. I don't know how it happened. I have theories but they sound crazy and I'm just paranoid about everything. It had only been about two and a half weeks after I moved into my new house. There were flowers and a letter on my doorstep. I didn't read the letter. I finally called my lawyer and told him everything, and handed over everything I had, including the video surveillance I had found of my ex casing my house. I had installed cameras in and around my home two days before the flowers and letter arrived. He had come in the middle of the night and tried all the doors and windows. I tried to file for a restraining order, but unfortunately, since he hadn't tried to harm me, it was thrown out. There wasn't anything else I could do in regards to that matter. I tried. No one would listen. It was quiet for a long time. I got really paranoid and started spending a lot of time at my friend's house, sometimes for long periods with my dogs in tow. I started to think maybe things were okay. Then one night, while I was walking up my driveway to the house, I noticed my ooze had been broken into in a violent manner. I ran into my house as quickly as I could. I saw that both of my dogs were attacked. They didn't make it. One of them was still alive, I held his little paw as I watched him die, his last whimpers will be forever ingrained into my memory. My neighbors called the police when they heard me screaming. The police have been somewhat helpful, there is a lot of evidence that he was the one who broke in.